I want to give you something real plain and simple, something that will take the pressure off you today because I know you're sitting there going, man, I've tried to go to church. I've tried to be a Christian and I fail time and time and time and time and time again. Well, join the club, so do I. But what God promises us in Ephesians 1.13 is just one example. When you make a proclamation of faith, the Holy Spirit comes to indwell inside of you until you stand in glory with God. And so you have God's Spirit inside of you, guiding you, leading you, helping you. Remember, the goal of the faith walk is to glorify God. Paul tells us we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. So you, as a Christian, who are trying to seek first the kingdom, and, and it's moment by moment, day by day, you struggle, you wrestle, you're uh, in this, as Paul kind of talks about, it's like a battle we're in, right? It's a battle, decision by decision, day by day. You're not doing it on your own. If you do it on your own, you're going to fail. Because every time I try to do anything on my own without God, it's the wrong thing to do. In my flesh, I think the wrong thing every single time. <laughs> Which is why I have my God door on and I'm always like, what does the Word say? What does the Word say? How do I know how to direct my next step based upon the Word and what it says? And usually it's the polar opposite of what I had been thinking to do in my own flesh. As we align our lives with God through submission and obedience, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit gives us the power, ability, know-how, and desire to seek God's kingdom and His righteousness. Two evidences of the Holy Spirit's indwelling, I can tell you, Christ-like love, which it's, 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 it's supernatural. You have a love for people and humanity that you couldn't have on your own. You have the ability to stop sinning is the second one. God always gives you a way out. The tempter, we know, from the, the wilderness temptation experience that Jesus went to a couple weeks ago, Jesus called him the tempter. The tempter is trying to deceive you and pull you away, but you have the Holy Spirit who helps you to be able to, to defend that. And what did Jesus do when he was tempted by the devil? It is written. He deployed the Word. He deployed the Word from the Old Testament. So we have to fill our minds with the Word. We have to interact with the Holy Spirit, and through that we will have this fruitful, successful life. Jesus tells us in John 14, 26, the Helper, the Holy Spirit. Side note, not in my notes. In the Bible, women are called helpmate. Right here, God is called the Helper. The Holy Spirit, part of the Trinity. Helper, the Holy Spirit. So helper, helpmate, is not a negative, secondary, lower position. It's on the status and level of the Trinity. The helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you to remember, remembrance all things that I have said to you. So the Holy Spirit is going to be there to illuminate the text, to remind you of the Scriptures. I live and die by Luke 9, 23, 24, 25. It's picking up my cross daily, dying to myself. Losing my life for the sake of the kingdom is, a, is my summary statement of that. And in that way, every day when I have things that are difficult, things that are not easy, and I have to remind myself, blessed is the man who is poor in spirit. Contrast that with if we disobey Christ's teaching here, we are like the builder we read from last week who builds his house on sand. We know that you don't build a foundation a concrete foundation on sand. But if you want to be called what Jesus says is foolish, then you build your foundation in your life not on the rock, which is Jesus. We must hear God's word, Jesus told us, and we must obey God's word. And that's where true wisdom comes from for having built our house on this solid foundation. Mm -hmm.